One of the defining features of a QNAP is that it's accessed over a network. This enables many devices and users to connect to it both on the local network and remotely. These connections are achieved by accessing it via an IP address. One of the first things that you do when setting up your QNAP NAS is determine how your IP address is assigned. In this tutorial, we'll be going over how your QNAP NAS is assigned its IP address and some basic network settings for the NAS. First, let's take a look at the initial network configuration page at NAS Setup. Here, you will decide between obtaining your IP address automatically from a DHCP server, such as your router, or assigning yourself a static IP address. A static IP address is an IP address that doesn't change, or you could say an IP address that remains static. This can be used in situations where you have numerous client devices accessing the NAS via the IP address, and you want to avoid the need to reconfigure the connections in the event that your IP address changes. When setting a static IP address, you will also determine the subnet mask. A subnet mask basically determines how many possible hosts can exist on a network. It's fairly common to have a 24-bit mask, which will look like 255.255.255.0. If a network has this mask, up to 254 devices could potentially be assigned IP addresses on that network. Keep in mind that when assigning a static IP address, you want to choose an IP outside of the range of IP addresses assigned from your router, as you don't want the IP you use to be assigned to another device, as this would create a conflict. You will also input the IP address of your default gateway, which in many cases, including mine, will be the router. This is the device that will facilitate connections to networks outside of my own. This is ultimately how my NAS will be able to connect to the internet. Another thing to keep in mind is that many QNAP NAS models include multiple ethernet ports. Each port will typically have its own IP address. If you aren't sure which to pick, just opt to obtain the IP address automatically from the DHCP server. Your IP settings can also be accessed after you have initialized the NAS. To do this open network and virtual switch, select interfaces. Here you will see the ports of the NAS. To set the IP settings for a particular port on the NAS, click on the three dots on the right side and click Configure. This will open a configuration window giving you similar options to the initial setup. You can choose between a static and dynamic IP address. There's also a jumbo frame option. The number is the amount of bytes per ethernet frame. If you aren't sure, you can just leave it at 1500. There is also a network speed option where you can configure the port to run at various speeds to help manage your bandwidth. If you aren't sure, you can just leave it set on auto negotiation. You also have the option to configure IPv6 addresses or disable IPv6. You can set up an IPv6 address as stateful or you can set it up stateless. You also have the option to set a static IPv6 address. You can also configure which DNS server you use on the third tab. The DNS server helps resolve domain names IP addresses. If you know the IP of specific DNS servers that you would like to use, you can input them here. Otherwise, you can just leave it to automatically obtain a DNS server address. QNAP's network settings enable flexible deployment of your NAS on the network to suit your particular environment's needs. Be sure to check out the rest of our videos to better utilize your QNAP NAS.